Well, a lot of fighters kind of half arse it, but can I say that? I, I, I can say, I can say that, yeah. Oh, fucking minted, but it's cool. My name is Jamie McCall, I fight out of base Muay Thai in Linwood. I'm 16 years old and I've had 13 fights and two adult fights. I started in 2018 when I was 11. On, uh, it was just when I was my first year going into high school. So started in August 2018. I remember my first session, Just it was like a small gym. We had, it was just me and my coach, she's just opened his gym there. So. It was all ripped up mats and everything walked in, it was just him for me and him for weeks in the kids' classes and just kind of basically just took us for one to ones the whole time and I just remember hitting the, bag, hitting the, hitting the pads and that thinking, oh this is minted man. <laughs> Probably the biggest like, change in like, just the way I was thinking after my last fight, I thought, I had my first A-class fight and I got stopped in the second round, I thought like a dead strong boy and that, I had a good first round but got caught with a good punch and couldn't recover from it, I just, it just kind of switched in my mentality, I needed to train a bit harder and I always trained hard but it just kind of made me realise what I really wanted to do because I was gutted after it and what, it just, I was just gutted about that and it's completely switched my mindset a bit. There's been a few times that like, I go through, go through stages, sometimes I think oh I'm here doing well and training's going well but then you have a bad session and I go home thinking oh I'm awful at this, I'm chucking this, I'm not doing it again, what, like, it goes up and down, it's just like a, it's a pure rollercoaster then like, you think, sometimes you think you're minted with it and then sometimes you think you're doing awful and I've definitely definitely went through a phase where I thought I kind of just hit a point where I wasn't going to get any better and then I actually had that fight and I lost and I feel like I've improved much, much, much more than that since that fight. I'm quite bad for overthinking, like I've even sitting before bed and that, staying up all night sitting thinking about things, like I just find that it's hard to deal with but just kind of need to remember that it's not every session is going to be a bad session it's always the next day after i'm training and that like you feel minted but you, if you have a bad session you feel awful until you train again and then you feel brilliant again after it my best moment in thai boxing so far was probably my first fight after lockdown so i had i had two junior fights before lockdown and then covid happened and i didn't fight for i didn't really get to train much but uh, my first fight i fought a boy called gary and it was a really hard fight man but it was just because he pure hurt us with kicks and that, and he was kneeing absolutely destroying me with these, man, like, really bad. So I felt pure, that was probably the best moment, because I was quite badly hurt in that fight, and I managed to overcome it and come back to stop him in the fourth round. So I was quite proud of myself after that. I'm just grateful for everyone in the gym, like, they're really like my family as well, like, they're, we're all dead, dead close in the gym, like, just grateful for having that kind of relationship and that kind of, like, I, f I genuinely do think of them as my family, like having that kind of relationship with them, just being able to talk to them about anything, it's just I'm really grateful for that, just having, even though I don't do it all the time, if I, I know if I ever need anything, they're there. I'm scared every time before I fight, I sit and think, why am I doing this, I don't, don't want to do this, I sit and think in ways like, how am I going to get out of this, but then the second you walk out you feel brilliant again after it. I feel scared all the time doing it, it's not, if something's no, something's no worth doing if you're not scared about it, like if, it's, if you don't care enough about it to not be scared then it's not worth doing. Uh, a lot of fighters, especially in Scotland and that, they kind of half arse it, like they'll, they'll say oh I want to fight and then they'll, they'll skip rounds of pads, rounds on pads, they'll skip days training, they'll go out and bevy on the weekends and stuff, I don't do any of that, I stay in every Saturday, just wait to go to training in the morning, that's, I think that's what makes me different than quite a lot of fighters, especially my age. Everyone's so caught up in then going out at the weekend. Like everyone still pure lives for the weekend, even if they're fighting and stuff, they still live for the weekend and go out every weekend. It just doesn't appeal to us. I don't think there's any worse way to live than just constantly waiting for Saturday to come about so you can go out and have a drink. I don't need anyone to keep me going when things get hard. I don't think you should rely on people. Like, because relying on people, you're only going to end up getting what, what if somebody's not there to help you? you. I don't think you can always just constantly think, oh, I need to fall back on this person, you need to learn to cope with things yourself and be able to deal with your own problems yourself. Yeah, it's brilliant to talk to people but you're not always going to be able to. You need to learn to cope just yourself as well. Like, 
I don't need anyone to motivate me, I motivate myself and when I'm not motivated I'm disciplined and I do what I need to do still. Back when I was 14 year old I was going through a really hard time, like again relying on people. Uh, just was quite struggling a lot mentally, I was feeling quite down and it just got to a point where like I was just turning into not a nice person. Like, I wasn't doing well in school, I always struggled in school but I was really not doing well, I was skipping months at a time going into school and I was I was missing well, I was missing training sometimes, wasn't really wanting to go. I was falling out with my family, I basically fell out with my whole family, like wouldn't leave my room, didn't get along with them at all. Like I just wasn't a nice person to be around and it was quite clear that I was struggling but I didn't quite have like the maturity or strength to kinda of go and talk to people about it because I in my head I was like, oh, they all won't understand, they all just have a go at me because they're annoyed and I didn't really quite click, especially my mom that, I didn't click how much they actually loved us to be able to help us like that. So I didn't think to go with them. So I just kind of bottled it up and then one night it just got really fucking, <laughs> can I say that, yeah? It just got really hard and uh, it just kind of blew, uh, blew up and it's better to talk to people about things like, especially your family and stuff because people are, you don't really realise that it's only when you're going through a hard time and everything does hit that kind of boiling point where it gets so bad that you can't keep going that you realise that they are really there for you like my, uh, me and my family completely fell out like that was not <laughs> didn't get along with them at all but then after that we are so much closer like, especially my mum and that so 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 supportive was like they just are brilliant man everything just got a bit too hard then one night I kind of I did I just left home no one going no going to go back and ended up getting picked up by a by a police and taken him and my whole like I didn't I didn't have my phone on us or anything like just left I wasn't going to come back and just seeing everyone like my mum's face and that everyone there seeing how much everyone cared like my dad was there like my mum and dad split up you never see them in the same room and my dad was there like my whole family were there it was late in the morning it was like early in the morning as well and just seeing everything what that put my family through and that I just couldn't do that and I was starting to realise I was like I really need to I really need to get my, my shit together and just because I've seen how much it hurt them, seen how much I was hurting that I was going to do that to myself. Like after that day, because it felt it went from like such a low to such a high, it felt like there was absolutely nothing. Like I just hit rock bottom, and then seeing how much my family supported us and that it just brought me straight back up again. I just started talking to my family, like talking to my mum about it, like just spending more time with them, spending more time talking to like my coach about it. He's brilliant with it as well. Like he's the one I go to and I see if I've got anything wrong with the boys at the gym, I'll go talk to them. And I just started training harder and more because it was kind of like a, I almost used it as a coping strategy. Uh, it was just training all the time, like hours and hours in the gym that day. Just even just sitting there doing nothing, just being around all the people helped us. Like, I think being around the people that care about you is what's going to help you. Being resilient, I think it's just your ability to bounce back from like things that are high hard like last January I was going through a really hard time like really hard time and but see since that time two years ago I've learned my lessons on what to do so I've just been like right I'm not letting myself fall back into that kind of mindset and that I'm not going to sit and feel sorry for myself because I'm just going to get up start training there again like just using being resilient I think it's just your ability to bounce back and keep yourself strong even when everything is getting harder I'm quite quite shy. I never used to be. I used to be when I was in school. I was a f awesome man. Ask anyone I was in when I was in school, dead cocky and that. But then once I left school, I kind of quieted down and got. I'm really shy you now. Hate meeting new people. Can hardly get a word out of them unless I really know you. But I feel like once like I go out and fight, I feel dead confident. Like, I feel like I'm on top of the world. Like almost feel like a pure showman. Like you just feel like you're a different person, well, I just think I want it more than most, like, I'm willing to do the things that other people aren't, like, I'm willing to give everything up. I have cut off a lot of people, like, anybody, anyone who's, I don't have any friends from school still, but I've got one or two, but I don't go out and I don't see them at the weekend, they'll ask, oh, do I come out for a drink and that? I'm like, no, 
Like, I don't even, like, even if they're going out drinking, I don't even sit there and just not have a drink or anything because I don't want to put myself in that kind of situation. I don't feel like, I don't believe in putting myself in an environment that's no good for me. Like, I'd rather sit in my room myself watching Netflix. Everyone would say, oh, you're boring, you're boring, but it's not boring to me. It's, I'm so content with how my life is now. And I'm just willing to give up everything for what I want to achieve and what I want to do. I constantly doubt if everything I'm doing is worth it. Like, say you have a bad sparring session or something, you get leathered, you're sitting like, no, I'm shite, man. Like, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Like, it just, sometimes even when it's getting a bit, you're just tired after training, like, and then you've got to do another session later on in the day, you're just like, what's the point, man? Like, or like, even when you're, you've not got, say you've not got much sleep and you're training early in the morning, you're like, oh, why did I pick today this? But when it's cold and, like, when it's winter and it's cold and dark in the morning, it's harder to get out of bed, but you still need to do it. It is worth that in the end. How do you know the hard work is worth it? Just because how it, firstly how it makes me feel. Like, I think if something makes you happy, it's going to be worth it, no matter how hard that is. If you enjoy what you're doing, it's worth it. Even if you're not winning fights, if you enjoy it, it's worth it, I think. But I think, not that I think losing is not bad, it's awful. And obviously I never go into a fight thinking, oh, it's all right if I lose, I'm really hard on myself like that. But I think, not, I don't think it's not worth it to, I think the risk was worth, well, the risk is worth the reward. Like you're never going to be in the great if you don't risk. My mum hates it, my mum hates me doing that, like, she always crying by the side of my face. She's getting a bit better, she's starting shouting me on there, but my mum hates it. My, my brothers love it, but my brother, my brother Alexander, he, he was the one who actually got me into watching MMA and stuff and because he used to <laughs> he used to play the UFC games like on Xbox and I was like, Oh that's pure cool being a wee like ten year old man being like, Oh that's pure cool and I wanted to start doing start doing MMA. So I started a bit of boxing and I never I never really stuck with because it, it felt like I just wasn't really enjoying it. And then I went to my first Muay Thai class through through a boy in my brother's football said to us to go to it. So I went to it and from the second I just loved it and but my mom, she wasn't, she's not really, she, I'm sure if it was her choice, she'd tell me not to do it, but she's one of the people where if it makes me happy, she's happy. And my brothers and that, they love it as well. I'm just thankful for my sponsors, like Damage, Dale Murray, sends us, sends us out shots and stuff, like, just anyone supporting us in that way, like, I've got a few other sponsors, Reload, Meal Prep, uh, the Mental Shift, uh, yeah, I'm just grateful for everyone who helps me get to what I want to achieve. I'm fighting Kyle Donnelly in the 13th of May for a WBC national title. Um, that's, a, that's a risky fight for me because Kyle's really, really good. He's a lot more experienced than me. He's really, really tall. But again, like I said earlier, I don't think if you, if you don't risk it and you're not going to get the reward, I'd rather, I'd rather go fight Kyle, get beat, than go fight somebody shite and win easy. Like, it's those kind of, I think the risk's worth the reward. Like, I'm fight also fighting on the 3rd of June in Newcastle. Um, that'll be a hard fight as well, fighting, going from fighting a big tall boy to a shorter boy. But um, that'll be a hard fight, that boy's a hard boy. So it's just two completely different styles as well. So got two fights in three weeks. So I'm looking forward to that because I've not been able to fight this year at all.